It's November 6th today. November 7th is election day. You have no school tomorrow. So no school on the 7th. No school on the 7th. On Wednesday of this week, which is the 8th, I have to I have to be I will be absent. You will have an activity that you will have to complete. What are you voting for? What are you voting for? You look it up. On the ninth Thursday, you have a fast seven <coughs> schedule. Because Friday, there's no school. So we have class today on November 6th, 7th. There's no school for you. We will be here. Your teachers will be here doing professional development, but you will not be here. 8th, I will be absent. Thursday, there's a fast get set. So you have a very short class Thursday. Today is a regular day, Friday, no school. So we only meet one and a half times this week together. We have been talking about the cell. And based on, based on assessments and student feedback, Yes, please. I don't know what the heck. I wish I could close the shades. Based on assessments and student feedback, your cell, your knowledge of cell structure can be broken down into two groups. Group one, it's about 60% of the, of the students are great. Group two, which is about 40% of the students, are in trouble. You don't know your organelles. You don't know, you're not paying attention to details. You don't know their function. You're lucky if you know the names. You don't know the cell types. You don't know what a cell membrane is. Again, what, about, what did I talk about a, a few minutes ago? Paying attention is the stuff that you don't do that determines your future. Oh, and by the way, people are having some kind of field trip, I guess, uh, sometime. I think is it today they're having a field trip? Some people are having a field trip today. So literally, I'm, I, it's, it's a I asked a student to make a decision on what, on, and make some choices because some of the kids that are going, choosing to go on these field trips are not doing, they're in that 40%. They're in trouble. How does that make sense? Again, it's not always the choices you make. It's often the things you don't do. So 40%, you're in trouble. If you're in trouble in a class, it, often you guys say, it, it's your class, Mr. Meza. I don't understand your material. You're so wrong. It's not even funny. It's not my material, it's your material. I know it, you don't. You need to know it. I, I, I don't know what else to do to convince you that you need to know this material. You need to know it without excuses. So you really need to pay attention. So let's go ahead and actually cover the, the in the time we have left, let's try to address some of our needs. So we talked about this thing called phospholipid, correct? And we said that this phos these phospholipids, they have hydrophilic. You had a, a project which you, where, you built, where you built a membrane, did you not? Yes. You have it in front of you? Because it's due today. Yes. So you need to have a piece of paper. Put your name on a sheet of paper. I'm going to give you three minutes. 
to put your name, the period on a, on a sheet of paper, your period and your full name. Not ZZ or Jimmy or, or Love Apple or whatever people, nicknames they have. Full name, period. Believe it or not, I have people that write those kind of things down. And tape this or place this on top, your model on top of your page with your name and place that on the back, starting in the back corner, starting that corner. I will grade them today. You will get a grade today. Take the next few minutes and get it done. Let's go. If you don't have it, this is zero. It's okay. It's just a zero. Move on. This is the hydrophobic section. So it is nonpolar, repels water. I need that copy of your, give me your phone. Bring your phone over here or take it to the office and turn it into the office for the day. Whichever you like, but do it quickly. Here is a hydrophobic portion of your of your cell membrane and your cell membrane has this uh, not only does it have has two important uh, components the phospholipids the phospholipids can be uh, saturated or unsaturated If they're unsaturated, you expect that the is this the is this your phone? Yes, it is. Why didn't you bring it? So this is saturated versus unsaturated. Unsat the more unsaturated, the more concentration of unsaturated, the higher the fluidity, the more fluid the membrane is. Because there's more space in between the molecules. They move around more. The more uh, in animal cells, only in animal cells, only in animal cells, there is something called cholesterol. And cholesterol looks like this. I sketched it up like this. Just a, it's four rings, and then there's this. Uh, there's this tail. It's hydrophobic and it also increases, increases fluidity of the membrane. So in winter, often in some animal models, you get more cholesterol in the membrane than you do in the summer. The amount of cholesterol in the membrane changes uh, with conditions. The point is that that's pretty much the structure of the membrane. But as we discussed, and as you know, because you, where are the, where are the models? As the three people out of 30, how many people in those, are there groups of people there? Yeah. All right, so how many, how many people did group one? Who, how many people did the first model? They just skip, raise your hand if you're a group. Let me see, who's in your school? All right, so that group. Are you all in this group or just you? So you three are one group. Is that correct? It's us two and the first group. All right, so you four are one group. All right. And then me and Fernando are together too. So that's, a, and then, so that's four, five, six. Who's in the last group that, that turned it in? That's for the big group. Raise your hand if you're in the last group that turned it in. Not Prenna and her, not these four. Who else? So one, two, three. And you? Four. You have yours in your locker. Anybody else have theirs in their locker? Yeah, so you have yours in your locker. So you're going to say, so two more in the lockers. I got one, I got 10, I, I, I missed it, I see 10 kids that did it, it turned it in. I got you two, just you two? No, I have this. You and Madison has two. And what about you? But right, so you work by yourself. And you? So, so you five. So I got 40%? 40 percent. 40 percent of the of the class did not do this assignment, right? 40 percent. Does it? Where did you hear that number a minute ago? 
the, the, the people in trouble, right? The same 40% are still not doing it. Isn't that interesting? I didn't know who did it. I didn't know what group. I, I could have predicted who d didn't have their model. In fact, I did without even trying. Predict who didn't have their model. Isn't that interesting? At least uh, how many people. Let's move on. So those of you that did the model know that there's two, there's two parts to the member, or there's two layers to a, uh, to a cell membrane. The two, the two hydrophobic heads, and then the two hydrophobic heads, and then this, this, these hydrophilic, or I'm sorry, hydrophilic heads, and then the, all these tails in the center, right? And then occasionally you have a cholesterol molecule made of four rings that sits in here. And some of these fo uh, tails, phospholipid, ta uh, hydrophobic tails, some of these hydrophobic tails all dissolve each other. None of them love water. They sit in the membrane separating the cell membrane acts as a separator between inside and outside. Is everybody okay with that, those people that did it? If you didn't do it at this point, I just got to say, well, whatever. They're either going to catch up or not. I don't know what else to say. So yeah, those of you, do you all understand that that's a cell membrane? It's a bilipid layer. Bilipid layer. Two layers of phospholipids, the hydrophilic head and the hydrophobic tails. Are we all good with that? Yes or no? All right. We said there has to be a way to get stuff in and out. You have to be able, this is outside. That's right. Good. Outside. Outside has, outside has uh, water, H2O. Inside has water, H2O. How do we get stuff in and out? We need holes, but we can't have just holes that just, we can't just have holes that are unregulated, otherwise it destroys the, the cell. So you have to have transport proteins. So we have these proteins that sit in the membrane that look like this that we call channel proteins we have we have other kinds of proteins that also allow things in and out but they have a gate they have a little door that opens and closes so these are gated channels also channels channels meaning they're holes you know what, I'm gonna draw these proteins where they're outside, I'm gonna draw them green so that they, you can tell the difference between the green, the green is hydrophilic and the blue is hydrophilic. This is very difficult. And of course, their proteins are folded. These proteins are folded. What does that mean? We'll get into that a little later, but they're folded. That's how you make these channels. You take a long chain and you fold it like a rope. You can make a rope in anything you want, any shape you want, with, as long as you fold it and bend it. Uh, these, these long chains can also be folded and bent. Uh, what's a good example of this is hair. I've seen you ladies in the school, in school, take hair and make all kinds of interesting shapes with your hair, correct? You fold it, bend it twist it, you tie it off, and you make these amazing shapes. Correct? Yes. All right. Very good. You do the same with the protein. So these proteins are long chains that are folded and, and bent. 
Then you have proteins that sit on the outside of the cell. They just sit on the outside and all, they, all they're doing is identifying you as you. So as long as you have these cell surface proteins, they're usually anchored with a, with a, a little anchor. You know what an anchor is, right? Mm, yeah. Okay, so it's like, a, like in a ship, you have, a, you have an anchor that's connected to a chain that holds the ship still in an ocean that's always moving. You do the same here. You have a, an anchor protein that, or a part of the protein that sticks into the, into the phospholipid layer, keeping the cell surface protein on the cell surface. And these are used to identify. These, these communicate and they ID you. These are IDs. Then you have signal receptors. You have receptors on the cell surface. And receptors have to accept specific signals. And so when you have a signal that matches, for instance, insulin, then insulin's gonna match and bind to the space like a lock to a key. But that's not good enough what has to happen. That's on the outside. How do you get the signal inside? The transport proteins? No. Good guess though. Part of the part of this protein has to do what? Exactly. Excellent. You have to have part of the protein that has to go inside. You have to cross the membrane. It, it like uh, like the phone cable. This is a phone. There's a wire. Yes. It's connected to this box. How do we get out? How do I call your mother? Because the wire is connected. The wire is connected to another wire that goes where? To the office. Outside. To the office. To the, that's right. To the room. But outside, through the wall. Right? To a hole in the wall. So you have to have something that crosses the membrane and then then has another part out in the inside that does something, sends a signal to the rest of the cell. So this is the receiver, also known as a receptor. And this is the signal. Just like in the positive and negative feedback loops that we talked about earlier in the year, you have a, po you have a signal, it matches the receptor. The receptor has to be, you have to be able to get the signal into the cell so that the cell can then change and do something. Whatever that is. There's a hundred different functions that it'll do. This is just, this is for sugar. This signal's for sugar, but there's a hundred other things we can use, we could talk about. Mm -hmm. Well, that's this example, insulin. There's other, there's other cell, cell signals. So let's talk about what they were talking about here. We're saying signaling. We're talking about IDing, right? We're talking about, in these two cases, transporting. So these are the functions. These transport, these signal, and these ID. And there's other functions as well. There's other things that we can make, we can have that cells do, but for the most part, these are the, the four big ones. So that's what's on the outside. Now, here's another question is how does stuff get in and out of a cell? Well, for that, we have to go back to our kinetic energy discussion. Okay, are we good with this? This should be, this should, I've drawn this before. You've made a 3D model of it using paper and color. We're good with this. You understand this will be on the next test, without a doubt. You understand that in May you will be tested on this. Okay. By the state of Ohio, by the way. So here, if we took and we divided this space 
And we put water on both sides. Remember, water looks like this, right? But I'm going to put dots. The blue dots are water. And in this water, we dissolve the solute. So the water is the solvent. As a, as a clue, you should know that the solvent is usually in, is in greater concentration. So there's more of it. When two things are in solution, when two things are really mixed, it's the one in a larger concentration that's the solvent. So remember, what, sol, solution just means really well mixed. It's not, they're not chemically bonding. They can dissolve each other. They can, they, the, there can be interaction between the molecules, but the molecules don't become, don't change themselves. The molecules themselves don't change. So that being said, if this is water, it's made of, uh, it's made of molecules. What do we know is happening to these molecules since they're not at absolute zero? What do we know is happening? They're moving. They're moving. Excellent. They're moving in directions. They're vibrating. They're moving in a direction. They're whizzing around in this liquid. Why don't they become a gas? Because it's not a boiling uh, Good. My oh, God, you're so, you're so smart. When you, when you pay attention, you impress me, girl. All right, so... That's right. They're not at boiling point. What ho what's holding them together, though? I was going to ask what gas Yes, concentration. The solvent is the one, is the one of the two. If there's two things, a, a solution is made of a solvent and a solute. Two parts. The solvent, a solution is a mixture. Homogeneous mixture, meaning you can't tell the difference. If you look at salt water, it looks like salt water. It looks like fresh water. You can't tell the difference between salt water and, and, and fresh water until you do what? Until you taste it. You can't tell the difference by looking at it. That's what we call a solution. It's homogeneous. 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 It looks the same. All right, so so homogeneous means means it looks all the same. It all looks like one thing. So a solution is looks like all one thing. And yes, everything's moving. Everything's moving all the time because it has kinetic energy. It's called kinetic energy. It's always moving, but there's nowhere to go. Both. Solution, the solvent, the solution, the solvent, and the solute are all moving. They're just moving around. Never standing. They're kind of like you. Never sitting still. Look, bouncing up and down. Never sitting still. That's what water, that's what all thing, everything. Solid, liquid, gas. Everything's vibrating. Solids move less. Liquids move a little more. Gases move the most. But they're moving. But why doesn't it move away? Why doesn't it go into the air and go and turn into vapor? But what's holding it back? Hydrogen bonds. The intermolecular forces are pulling them together, and so they're staying in liquid at room temperature. Once you 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 give it enough kinetic energy, they leave. We call that boiling point or uh, heat of vapor, uh, the evaporation point. Yeah. When they're in that cup and they're moving around, they're not changing, so will it be in dynamic equilibrium? Excellent question. Lovely. The, right now they're separate, though. Oh. We haven't connected them yet. We're gonna see how there's a there's a there's a separator right here. What? She's good when she's on point. When she's on, I just got to make sure she stays on. All right. So, if these red dots are sodium ion, they're the solute. Which side has more solute? 
correct. And I'm going to go ahead and call it, let's call it A. And this is B. Now, if I put small holes in this, if I put a little hole here, a little hole here, another one here, another one here, what's going to happen? They're going to combine together. They're moving around randomly. They're not attracted to one another. They're not repelled. They're just moving around. Boom, 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 boom. What will happen? Yeah. Eventually correct. Yes. Well, what's going to happen is water's going to go through here, isn't it? Because it, it's moving. And it's going to bounce around and come over here. But for every one that goes, because they're equal, about equal amount, one, every water that comes over here, what happens is there's a water that comes the other way. Right? Because the solvent is moving, which is the question you asked. Yes. Correct? So water's moving in both directions. Now the solute, ev what, since they're randomly moving... Do you see that there's more red on this side? So randomly at first, you're going to get more red coming in this direction. Correct? So just because of statistically, it makes sense that since you have more on this side than this side, then the solute's going to move in this direction. The, eventually, you're going to reach what someone already asked, dynamic equilibrium. Eventually... What you're going to get, I'm going to simplify this if you don't mind because we're running, I don't want to run out of time. You're going to get, eventually what's going to happen is you're going to get an equal number of solutes and solvents on both sides. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Eventually they're going to be unequal on both sides. Now, does that mean they stop moving? No. But for every one that goes this way, statistically, you're going to get one that goes the other way. So they stay the same. So we call that dynamic equilibrium, which we've covered before, haven't we? We call it dynamic. Dynamic because it moves equilibrium. So they're, 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 but they initially, so this is time. So when we look at this arrow, it's time. Over time, what happens is the solutes on this side, where it's higher concentration, move to a lower concentration. That is the rule. If you remember this rule, your life will be simpler. Your life, you will get a third, maybe a fourth of the questions right on every test you ever take in biology. If you remember, well, maybe a fifth. But in any case, it's the basis of so much. Thing, everything moves from high to low without extra energy. If you leave it alone, things are going to move from high to low. That goes with pressure. Pressure does that. Uh, the winds, winds go from high pressure to low pressure. That's what causes the wind. Uh, salt concentration from high concentration to low concentration. Everything moves from high to low. Electrons do it. That's why batteries, go, electricity flows from the negative to the positive. It flows that way because there's a lot of electrons on one side of the battery, not so many on the other. Zip, they move. Yeah. Phosphate lipid, like the bones, right? The tails and the heads. Why can't they like touch each other? They because one's polar, one's, one's polar, one's nonpolar. They do. The heads and the tails are attached. Yeah, but, like, but when you dissolve, the nonpolars dissolve each other, and because they hate water, they point away from water. There's water on the inside, and there's water on the outside. So the only place they have to go is here in the middle. And water tries to get in. So the heads are like on the outside. Well, not outside, but like facing towards the outside, and the other one's facing towards the inside. You got it. At least one person's thinking. I'm sure others are, but they're not speaking, so I don't know. The concentration would differ depending on how much solvent is. That's exactly good. The concentration, these are great questions. The concentration means. How much solutes you have in a solvent. 
That's what concentration means. No, they create a solution. So when you talk about the concentration of salt on this side, salt is high, solute is the same on both sides. Salt is higher here, lower here. Usually we represent concentration three different ways. You're going to see it in three different ways on, on any of the tests you take this year. You're going to see concentration can be represented as high or low. It can be represented in percentages, 10% versus 20% of solute, right? So that means that 20% is a higher concentration. Do you all agree on that? Yeah. Okay. So let's, let's see if I, let's test you. Let's see if you understand. If I give you a, a balloon, uh, a, a, a cell, and I tell you, I have to tell you two things. I have to, the first thing you got to ask every time you come to these questions. By the way, this is called diffusion. Yeah. Diffusion is the movement of particles from high to low. If I fart in this, where I'm sitting right now, people in the back corner will smell it. Why? Because it's spreading. It moves. It diffuses. If you spray yourself with perfume in your room and your mother's allergic and she's in the, down the hall, what will happen? She'll sneeze. She'll have a reaction eventually. The further away you are, the longer it takes, but it's called diffusion, going from high concentration to low concentration. This would be diffusion because you're talking about the solute. But it's a good question. That's the next step is osmosis. So diffusion is the movement the movement from high to low of solvent. Osmosis is the movement of water you know what let me let me rephrase that osmosis is the diffusion of water so when water goes from its high to its low now it gets a little complicated but only a little bit if you listen carefully and you work out the pr practice problems that you'll get on wednesday work out those practice problems and thursday we'll go over them it'll be a lot easier. This is one of those decision-making points right now, right here. You need to make sure you know this stuff so that you're ready. You heard me tell you, break down what you have to do this week. We're not gonna see each other much. So as diffusion is a movement from high to low. So if I tell you there's a cell that's 10% sodium ion on this side, and 20% on this side. And I tell you, your first question you have to ask, the very first question you have to ask, and you must ask this, and this is the one that everybody skips. In order for you to answer what's happening here, you have to ask a question, the first, a series of questions. The first question is, is the membrane very, very close. Permeable. To the solute. Will, permeable means it allows it to pass through. Will, will the membrane allow the solute to pass through? Does it, like, is that transfer protein or not? That's a good point, yes. If there's a channel protein for sodium or not, that's the question. That's exactly right. And I'm glad you're using your index cards. The, the plasma membrane is selectively permeable. What does that mean? It chooses, not, by, not with a brain, but it... it so, and, and you actually, and she answered the question, the question is what kind of transport proteins does it have? If it has the transport proteins allow sodium to pass through, then it'll go through. 
Because here's the thing. You have to know this. Yes, yeah, so you have to memorize this. Ions, ions, which means pluses or minuses, all right, do not pass without help. They need, they need a transport protein. Are we clear? Know that. Ions will not pass through the membrane without help. Polar, give me a second. Polar molecules if they're small like water alright they pass Slightly. Do you know what the word slightly means? Yes, very little. Very little. Large ones, like sugar, need help. Again, transport proteins. Those things you, you worked on, or you should have worked on. Nonpolar molecules... can be small or large. Small, small pass through easily. Large need help. So things like oxygen gas and carbon dioxide gas they, they pass through no problem. But things like uh, large nonpolar molecules don't. And neither do ions. Is that clear to everybody? Those are, these you have to understand. They will test you on this big time. They will give you a molecule, they'll tell you it's polar, or they'll tell you it's sucrose, which is a large nonpolar, uh, large polar molecule. It cannot get through without help. Glucose is a large polar molecule. It can't get through without help. They'll give you sodium. They'll give you chlorine. They'll test you on this all over the place. And we'll have to continue this. I'll post the rest of this video online. Please put effort in. Make sure you understand this diffusion osmosis before Wednesday so you can practice and then I'll explain it on what time we have on Thursday. So I want to make sure that we are correcting some mistakes. This should be not solvent, but solute. And these are the rules for what passes through this membrane without help and, does, and with or without help. So let's go ahead and take a look at something at a cell there's a cell and it's 20 percent oxygen inside 50 percent oxygen gas outside what uh what's going to happen in this cell Diffusion in what direction? Say what? From outside to inside. How do you know? Outside is high, inside is low. What were the questions I asked before I answered? Does this pass through the membrane? I answered yes, because it's small and nonpolar. So the next question, where is it high? Here on the outside, where is it low? Inside, things move from high to low without extra energy if they can pass. Okay, easy peasy. These questions are actually super easy, uh, assuming you, you know your basics. If you don't know your basics, then you're in trouble. All right, what if we changed it to
20% Na plus and 50% Na plus. And I don't tell you anything else about it. What's going to happen here? It needs a transport protein. So let's say there is none. No transport protein. Those channel, those spaces, what's going to happen? No sodium ion channel is available. What happens? So sodium is not going to move. If you have it, so what, per, let me ask this question. What percent of this cell inside is water? If you're just looking at sodium, just at this. 80% water. And outside, what is it? 50% water. So the next part of your problem is when, so part two, when the solute cannot move, then, and only then, water will move. What is the solute here? Sodium. Sodium. Can it move? No. no. So what's going to move? Water. Water. In which direction? Up. Inside, to inside to outside is correct. Why did she say inside to outside? Because it's 80% water inside and 50% water outside. So everything's going to move to from its high to its low. Remember... These are randomly moving particles. If there's more water particles inside than outside, then randomly you're going to get more water moving out than in. It's the diffusion of water, also known as osmosis. Osmo osmosis occurs if the, if the solute cannot move. Is that clear to everybody? So, if I take a red blood cell and I put this red blood cell in, two, in three different containers, one container having high, high solute, one container... If I tell you that, you know what? Let me do it the way I think they would they would likely do it on your exam. We have 0.3 percent uh, solute here. In fact, let me just not even put percent. Let's just point point three, and this is point th uh, point eight solute. This is point three solute and this is point one solute and I put that cell in each of these what happens in this situation where the where there's a higher concentration of solute what happens here well, it's higher solute here, so it's high solute here, it's low here, the solute cannot pass, right? Solute cannot pass. That's the first question you ask is, can the solute pass? The answer is no. So if it's high solute outside and low solute inside, what's the water like? Water has to be high on the inside and low on the outside has to be so water's going to be where, move where out 
If water is moving out, what happens to the cell? It gets smaller, it shrinks. So over time, over time, the cell is going to shrivel. It's going to shrivel up. It's going to shrivel up. So that's what happens to the cell if you put it in, a, in high salt. What if it's equal salt? 0.3 inside, 0.3 outside, what happens? Nothing. Nothing. Just whatever is able to move does in dynamic equilibrium. So this is dynamic equilibrium. It is moving, but there's no discernible difference because they're moving in the same direction, uh, in opposite directions at the same rate. So the cell stays the same over time. Now, what if I take that cell at 0.3 and I put it in something that's low salt concentration? What happens? And the salt can't pass through the membrane. It, it bursts, yeah. Why? Because if it's, it, let's, let's go walk through it. Now, here's the problem why people get these wrong is because they don't think it through. If, I, if it's 0.1 outside, that means it's low solute outside. That means high water outside because it's low solute. And that means it's low water in here and therefore high solute. See, all the work I just wrote, I wrote all that down because that way I keep it straight in my head. If the solute's not moving, then I don't have to worry about the solute. I have to worry about the water. High solute, high water outside, low water inside. What's going to happen? Water's going to go where? In. And it's going to keep moving in to the point where it might burst, is correct. It might actually... It'll swell up and burst open. It's possible it'll, it'll burst open, uh, but certainly it'll swell up. They'll, they'll actually swell up. When it's high concentration, we call this hyper. Hyper because it means high. Hyper is high. Like when you're hyperactive, you're highly active. So hypertonic. Tonic means a solution. So here, a solution is high in solute is hypertonic. There's two solutions here. Please make a note because they love to trick you on this. There's a solution outside. And it can be, if this is hypertonic, what's the inside, the solution inside? Hypo. So when it's hyper outside, it's hypo inside. Iso means same. Iso means the same. Isotonic means the same solute concentration. I'm going to use square brackets because square brackets mean concentration in chemistry and in biology. Isotonic means the same. So that means these, these are in dynamic equilibrium. They don't change. And then you have the last... By the way, if it's isotonic outside, that means the inside is isotonic. They're relative to each other. Does that make sense? I hope so. And then here, in the last one would be called what? Hypotonic. Hypo means low. So when you're hypoglycemic, you have low blood sugar. Hypotonic, which again means low solute concentration. All right, that's all you need to do Wednesday's activity. I hope you do well. I'll see you on Thursday.